I haven't heard Joe say thank you, President Trump, for the great job you did. Perhaps I'm just not listening. Now NATO's stuffed up with cash. Thank you very much, President Trump. Shut the f up! Thank you very much. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live! Tonight, Viola Davis and Julius Tennant, Brett Goldstein, and music from Daniel Caesar with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! Many of us thought it would never come. We were skeptical, uh, but let me give you some insight on how our jobs work here at this show. Less than two hours ago, I'm up in my office working on a monologue. I'm typing about opening day for baseball. I had a joke about how, I don't know, the people at Cracker Jack spent the whole winter in the dark sharing a can of Bumblebee tuna. We had a <laughs> thing about a new nasal spray that'll give you an erection in five minutes, <laughs> or your next one is free. And guess what? We had to throw it all in the garbage. It's all moot because the J in Donald J. Trump now stands for jail. That's right. <laughs> the um, Manhattan Grand Jury, which wasn't even supposed to vote today, voted today. And according to the New York Times and many, many sources, Donald Trump has been indicted for the first time in the history of this country. An American president has been indicted for his role in paying hush money to a porn star, although in fairness, that's a pretty narrow window. Like when Grover Cleveland was president, porn stars were very hard to come by. But <laughs> still, it's historic and it's funny. It's very, very funny. <laughs> that, I mean, of all things, of all the things he's done, the one that bit Trump in the ass was a round of post golf putter butter with the <laughs> star of Sex Bots program for pleasure. <laughs> Trump believed, he thought he was gonna get arrested last Tuesday, but then when he didn't, he started to get cocky. But yesterday he even wrote, I've gained such respect for this grand jury, perhaps even the grand jury system as a whole. The evidence is so overwhelming in my favor and so ridiculously bad for the highly partisan and hateful district attorney that the grand jury is saying, hold on, we are not a rubber stamp, which most grand juries are branded as being. We are not going to vote against a preponderance of evidence. And he was right. They voted for a preponderance of evidence <laughs> against him, that evidence being his payment of $130,000 to Stormy Daniels, who he claims he doesn't know, and his own lawyer saying Trump directed to make that payment and disguise the payment as a legal expense. That seems like a preponderance of evidence to me. I mean, I don't know. I'm not seeing a preponderance in person, but that's what I think it looks like. Today, Trump was not as enamored with the grand jury as he was yesterday. He truthed the following statement. Today, this is political persecution and election interference at the highest level in history. From the time I came down from the golden escalator at Trump Tower, He's so proud of that. And even before <laughs> I was sworn in as your president, the radical left Democrats, the enemy of the hardworking men and women of this country, have been engaged in a witch hunt to destroy the Make America Great Again movement. Well, I don't know. I think America is pretty great right now. But now they've done the unthinkable, indicting a completely innocent person in an act of blatant election interference. Blah, 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 blah. Joe Biden, Alvin Bragg throw the crooked Democrats out of office so we can make America great again. Next week, he's gonna have to write all this stuff down on the wall of his cell and Cheeto does. So just let him, geez, just let him go. And then he wrote as a follow-up, these thugs and radical left monsters have just indi indicated the 45th president of the United States. <laughs> Hopefully he can spend some time at the prison library learning how to spell. <laughs> Now that he's been indicted, not indicated, the former president had no choice. Uh, he has got to turn himself in for processing at the courthouse in New York in a spectacle that seems to have been made for reality TV. Good morning. 
There he is, the biggest loser. Maybe that's what he'll do now. Maybe instead of running for president, he'll do another show, like the Celebrity Apprehentice, or maybe, <laughs> maybe a sitcom like uh, Arrested Developer. We don't know. All we know is that right now, for the first time in seven years, Melania is smiling at mar a -Lago. <laughs> While Trump is frantically Googling how to make Diet Coke in prison toilet. <laughs> Best baseball opening day ever, I will say. And this is only, this is only the warm-up indictment. Lady Justice, right, she's getting loose in the bullpen right now. We'll bring her in in the night to close it out with insurrection and treason. But his next move will, of course, be to try to start another riot to get people to demonstrate on his behalf. Only Donald Trump could have supporters so crazy we have to seriously consider whether or not being charged with a crime is good for him. It's like an entire political movement made up of those women who mail their underwear to Ted Bundy. <laughs> the grand jury, you know, they didn't even ask permission. They moved on Trump like a witch. And he is gonna be arrested. He will be fingerprinted. He will be read his Miranda rights. Wait until he finds out all this time he had the right to remain silent. He's gonna kick him. <laughs> that one's gonna be... That's going to be a tough pill to swallow. And the saddest part of the story is, who's going to help Don Jr. pick out his Lunchables tomorrow? <laughs> DJ TJ jumped in with a special emergency edition of his podcast to lament and lash out at the long arm of the law, potentially taking Daddy away. Well, guys, uh, I guess I got some news about 10, 15 minutes ago. Apparently, you know, Soros to back Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is actually indicting my father. So let's be clear, folks. This is like communist level. Shit. This is stuff that would make Mao, Stalin, uh, Pol Pot, it would make them blush. Mm, you know, he had to Google every one of those names to figure out, right? <laughs> And you know he's scared because for once he's not waving his hands around like the, like the Swedish chef from the Muppets, but... <laughs> his brother Eric Trump tweeted that this is third world prosecutorial misconduct. Uh, it is the opportunistic targeting of a, a politician and campaign year, whereas Ivanka Trump said nothing at all. Who would have ever guessed that Ivanka would dump Trump before Melania? It's really shocking. <laughs> Ivanka has reportedly vowed to stay out of all of this. She's done with politics. They say she wants to spend more time um, waiting for her husband to go through puberty and, <laughs> and spend more time with their kids, Joseph, Arabella, and Theodore. You think Trump knows those kids' names? No, no way, right? Maybe Joseph, definitely not Arabella. I feel like the Trump kids are divided into two camps right now. Those who might visit him in prison and those who might join him there. But. <laughs> This is kind of perfect. When the news came in, Fox was uh, busy whining about, guess what, trans athletes in college sports. To be fair, there are a lot of male coaches and in the NCAA who are forcing um, this on their Do female athletes. Do they just identify as male? All right, um, we're going to break in with this Fox News alert here. Uh, we have just gotten word <gasps> former President Donald Trump has been indicted. I think Jesse's waters broke uh, when he heard that. He's, <laughs> these characters of Fox News, they're now bending over backwards for Trump because the last time they were straight with their audience about him, their audience got mad and left. Last time we got more insight into what went down at Fox News after the election thanks to these inter-office emails that have been released as a result of this lawsuit from Dominion Voting Systems, after January 6th, Rupert Murdoch, who owns Fox News, sent an email that said, Trump's incitement of violence was pretty much a crime, and said, best we don't mention his name unless essential, and certainly don't support him. And then that backfired, their ratings went down, so the CEO of Fox News tried to put a stop to fact-checking Trump's crazy claims. This is an email sent from Suzanne Scott, the CEO of Fox News on December 2nd, 2020, in response to a segment where they fact-checked fact Trump and these bogus election fraud things. This has to stop now. This is bad business. The audience is furious. Bad for business. Isn't it amazing? It's right there in print. The people who wrote these texts admit they wrote them, that it's bad business to give the audience facts, to fact-check, and the audience doesn't care at all. No one who watches Fox News is even going to know about this because they get their news from Fox News, and they're not gonna report it. They're gonna bop happily along, cheering along with 
tuck and the five nodding and grunting along with every story they hear from what is the WWE of news organizations. <laughs> and Congress, Republicans in Congress are even more brazen. Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, is planning to investigate the guy investigating Trump in New York, just in case you want to know where the real abuse of power is coming from. And sadly, what has been lost in all of this over the past couple of weeks is that lucky little leprechaun George Santos, who <laughs> made a stop at Fox Business this morning in an attempt to do some repair work on his image. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about you? Well, you know what, Kennedy, I'm, I'm, I'm an outsider to politics, and a lot of folks just want to in the media specifically try to paint me as the boogeyman, but the reality is the boogeyman is China. The boogeyman is inflation. The boogeyman is the Joe Biden administration, uh, not George Santos. I'm here, I came here, I'm a boring nerd, dork, whatever you want to call me. I'll stick with pathological liar, but thank you. <laughs> so George answered a bunch of jokey questions in this interview. He's chatting and laughing it up, and why not? He might as well have some fun with this. I mean, he might as well take a page from Trump and use this to make some money. <laughs> Look, it's Barbie. No, it's not. It's Georgie. He's fun and tall, plays volleyball. He's done it all. He's Georgie. Georgie, the George Santos action figure who simply can't tell the truth. With so many identities to choose from, like NYU graduate Georgie. Give me my diploma, Dean. But you don't even go here. I'm putting it on my resume anyway. <sighs> Broadway producer Georgie. I produce Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. Didn't that musical suck? No. Volleyball Georgie? Have you ever played volleyball? Lady, I invented volleyball. And grieving orphan Georgie. My mom died in 9-11. Georgie, come for dinner. But my maid Farofa. She's alive! And don't forget Jewish Georgie. My grandparents survived the Holocaust. Awesome! Collect them all. Brain Surgeon Georgie. Mermaid Georgie. Magician Georgie. Ballerina Georgie. G.I. Georgie. And so many other lies he's bound to tell. It's a Georgie orgy. Undeniable, unreliable, totally liable, Georgie. Georgie! Polygraph machine sold separately. Available at Rite Aid. There he is, there he is. Can you believe all this is going on, Guillermo? Yeah, Jimmy, this is great, Jimmy. You had a lot of tequilas today to celebrate, didn't uh, you? To celebrate, yeah, I'm very happy. Hopefully they put in jail him next week. How many shots did you have? Today is a special day, so four shots. Okay, four shots. <laughs> yeah. We got a good show for you tonight. Uh, for, now, hopefully there'll be no security issues because we are ill-equipped to deal with them. <laughs> from Ted Lasso, Brett Goldstein is with us. We have music from Daniel Caesar. We'll be right back with super couple Julius Kennan and Viola Davis. So stick around.